So we know how COVID affects the lungs, but how does it affect the brain? Nearly about 7 out of 10 people had COVID right now. In this video, we're going to talk about two really popular, well-respected journals. One's uh, Nature, one's the Journal of Medical Medicine. And uh, we're going to go through them and see what we know currently about COVID and your brain. This is Mohammed. This is Adi. This is the Neurosurgeon's channel. And this is the only place where you find two neurosurgeons talking about everything about the brain and spine. So we'll start with the first paper which came from Nature and that looked into the, how the COVID might affect our brain and what's the mechanism behind that. So I'll just read through bits and pieces from this paper and it became clear as the COVID affect the brain and it's about 80% of the people who has been hospitalized with COVID had um, some neurological symptoms, uh, which is quite a lot. The underlying mechanism of that is not clear, but what has been um, the hypothesis behind this is they have done some imaging of the brain for patients who had COVID and other patients who had not hasn't had COVID mm -hmm. and they basically found that there is a change or loss of the, some of the grey matter of the brain. Right. And the grey matter, just to explain, is basically the brain has two, two main things, which is the white matter and the grey matter. The grey matter, which is basically represents the surface of the brain and the white matter represents the deeper parts of the brain. Um, so that might mean that the COVID affects our brain somehow. Mm -hmm. Early in the pandemic, the researchers thought that the, the virus or the COVID virus can go through the brain directly. However, after some research, they found that it's difficult to go because we have something called a blood-brain barrier, which you can think of it as a protection wall, basically, between the blood that goes to the brain and the brain uh, tissue itself or the brain itself. And the COVID virus was not able to pass through. But one of the other mechanisms is that basically the COVID, we know that it goes through the nose and that goes what's called the olfactory mucosa, which is basically the lining of the nose from inside. And through that, from the nose is connected to the brain through the base of the skull. So that might be one of the mechanisms how the COVID can penetrate through that layer of uh, lining of the nose and then penetrate all the way up to the brain. There are other studies which looked into which part of the brain exactly is affected or which type of the cells of the brain that is affected and they found that the COVID virus can affect a uh, type of the cells in the brain called astrocytes. We have different types of cells in the brain but this one is very abundant in the brain and it has multiple functions. It's astrocytes because it looks like a star basically and it affects the astrocytes which can cause damage some other research looked into that from a different perspective where they found that there might be a change in the gene expression within the astrocytes which can subsequently affect the function of the astrocytes itself. One other group of researchers looked into or thought that the COVID virus can cut the blood supply to the brain. Not completely cut but it basically affects the supply of the brain. Uh, blood supply to the brain and um, they thought that it's the COVID virus can affect some cells called pericytes and pericytes are basically small cells that lies on the uh, like in the wall of the blood vessels and when it affects them um, uh, these cells it can lead to decrease of the blood flow that goes to the brain and then hence that would reduce the blood flow to the brain and affect it and cause some some sort of damage. We have seen few patients in, in our practice um, presenting with symptoms which relates to the decrease in the blood supply of the brain. Mm -hmm. However, kind of making a direct relation between this and the COVID virus is not clear given the number of cases are not huge and also it's difficult to make that uh, correlation without a large number of patients and good evidence that supports that and well prepared and well um, done studies. One more theory which is kind of explained in this paper is that the COVID can affect our immune system. We know that um, it's different between people, the, uh, the reaction of the immune system to infection or any, any other thing that we get exposed to is, is totally different between people. Some people when they're exposed to the COVID virus, their system is overreacting and that would lead to uh, reaction of the whole body and leads to damage and um, affect different parts of the body, including the brain. They found also that in the blood of, of the patients affected with COVID that there are some, something called autoantibodies, which is like antibodies produced by the body and that it kind of affects the body itself. So it's eating the, the body of the patient. It's attacking um, itself. Yeah, attacking itself, yeah. basically. Um, so that's, that's 
probably uh, one of the theories behind how the COVID can affect our brain. So the paper I'm looking at is from the Journal of the American Medical Association, or JAMA, and a lot of it is very similar to what Mohammed said, um, but it just goes into more detail. So one thing they ask is, does COVID or does the virus invade the brain? And they say, similarly, it's known to penetrate the olfactory mucosa, causing loss of smell, and then may enter the brain by migrating through the cribriform plate along the olfactory tract. So basically, as Mohammed said, the virus is thought to be going through your nose, that's why we test your nose, uh, if you thought to maybe have it, and then going through some of the nerves and maybe even through the lining of the base of the skull and then getting to the brain. Uh, but this study showed, after doing lots of different various tests, looking at viral RNA and reverse transcription, real-time polymerase chain reaction, but not by in situ hybridization. That's a lot of words, isn't it? That sounds, uh, that sounds, that sounds very complex to me. <laughs> so something really complicated that they did found that they could not demonstrate that there was viral RNA, which is similar to viral DNA, within the brain cells itself. So it's not getting in there, but obviously it's causing an effect because we've heard that 80% of people who have COVID have some sort of neurological or neuropsychological uh, fallout from that. So they went and talked about cytokines and microglial activation leading to neurotoxicity uh, and again this links to what Mohammed said that some people have an over exaggerated immune response and they pin this down to pro-inflammatory things such as interleukin tumor necrosis factor and tumor necrosis factor alpha are all produced in excess and these substances cause inflammation and they can cross the blood-brain barrier and so they could be getting in the brain and causing neuroinflammation and the neuroinflammation of a specific part of the brain can then go on to lead some lead to some long-term psychological or neurological symptoms. JAMA guys also talked about uh, they thought that the virus managed to enter the endothelial cells of the brain which is the blood vessels or brain vasculature and caused damage there and damage in any of your blood vessels uh, can lead to little clots forming, we'd call microthrombi, and we know that people get COVID and more risk of getting big clots in their legs or their lungs. Similarly, they seem to demonstrate that you're more likely to get these small clots within the vessels of the brain, and they've showed that COVID-19 brain damage shows microscopic and microscopic hypoxic, so lack of oxygen, or ischemic injury, and infarcts at autopsy, so they've seen people who've died after having COVID that they looked at the brain and they've shown that there's tiny areas where the blood supply has been blocked off in the brain causing tiny uh, mini strokes. And um, they thought that this is due to the fact that the complement cascade mediates synaptic pruning by microglia following viral infections. Again, starting to become complicated here. So these guys have said that understanding the aspects of COVID in uh, 19 brain damage could hopefully lead in the future to uh, long-term interventions to directly reduce the effects of COVID, which is pretty interesting because in brain, we've been saying that for a long yeah. time in brain injury, haven't we? Mm -hmm. We've said for decades in traumatic brain injury, if we could understand exactly all the little parts of uh, that go wrong in your brain after you have a brain injury, we can make a drug and give it and block this part. And it's never that simple, yeah. is it? So yeah. I unfortunately don't hold out that much hope that will find a magic pill to reduce these side effects. But hopefully I'm wrong. Yeah. I mean, generally speaking, as we explained all of these theories, the main, the main point here is not to make you panic and think you had COVID and you think that your brain will be not functioning as, as it should be. Um, here it's probably reporting um, extreme cases of COVID who our patients might have died from COVID and that probably due to either of one of the mechanisms that we've just explained. But I don't think there are any studies that looked into the general population who had COVID because that's probably billions of patients um, who had COVID. Yeah. And uh, I don't think we would come to a point that we understand exactly what happens to the brain. It might be nothing at the end. And even if there's something that's happening in the brain, it might be a very trivial thing and it's not affecting your body or affecting your function. So don't worry about it, basically. Um, it's just an interesting thought and interesting mechanisms of how the COVID can affect other parts of the body. In our case, we're kind of interested in the brain yeah. anyway. So I hope you learned a little bit about how COVID could affect your brain and stay tuned for our next video on the Neurosurgeons channel.